Uh, and I applaud uh, Miranda for putting such a wonderful format together. Uh, clearly, this is a field in terms of GI mobility that uh, is still at the different stage, I think, although the gut is such a primordial organ, and you would think that uh, you know, we would know far, far more of it since we've had it since this morning. Um, this really is an uncharted, largely uncharted area when it comes to the basic sensations or the basic motility. And it escapes me still to think that after all these years, we can't even, we know so much about, for example, how our hand feels pain. And yet, we so, know so little about how um, our gut uh, really feels. So this visceral sensitivity is really what you're hearing over and over again. And what I thought I'd do today is tell you a little bit about the differences between, so it's really versus, gastroparesis, because you've heard quite a bit about it already. And the overarching goal, really, is still my belief that the only way we can move this field forward in terms of gastrointestinal motility is really to go from an understanding of physiology. Because we've seen a lot of these kind of fundamental reasons to understand visceral pain, discomfort, and motility, and you have to remember that it wasn't too long ago that we had entity, entities such as PMS or Huntington's chorea, which were thought to be largely psychiatric. And so really the, what I want to impart to you in terms of a larger goal is to say that what we need to understand in terms of any of these phenomena is to understand the underlying mechanism. And that's where I think we have to start changing definitions from those from what we think is etiology, to then symptom complexes, for which maybe many of them are heterogeneous, to then actual fundamental mechanisms that we can either have biomarkers or ways to understand the specific pathways to hit, because indeed, in the end, that's what we're going to be able to impact on. For patients, I think the overriding goal is to impart to them that what they're feeling in terms of pain and discomfort is real. And indeed, it's not linked to many of the fears that many of my patients come in saying, is this cancer? Or is this going to lead to cancer? Indeed, it's an acknowledgement. And that's an important acknowledgement because now we're seeing more and more medications come out. And as you know, this is not, if it were an anti-cancer therapeutic agent, clearly you're, you're balancing your, your benefits and your risks very differently from a medicine that you're going to take uh, you know, chronically and for example, for GERD, something that won't kill you.